I don't like this conversation. Why? I just don't. Some of our friends started walking around with security. I'd be like, they just doing the most. And, and I questioned because I've always wanted to be successful. And I believe there was a big part of me that wanted to be famous at one time because I was, you know, doing music. But the thought of not being able to run to my neighborhood nail salon, do I need to have people escorting me to the nail salon? And, and if that's the case, like now, is that the life that I really want? I don't want to not be able to run into the mall or run into the store real quick, right, without having to think about, who saw me and who means ill intention. People attack me online. Yo, like probably three people called me. Like, yo, bro, you good? I'm like, yeah, why would I be good? You'll get yourself in a deeper situation by trying to fight back because it eggs the people on, yeah. right? But I truly, truly, like we talked about on uh, on live, I feel bad for these people. Mm -hmm. Like I feel bad for someone that is so angry that they would attack somebody that they don't even know. I feel terrible for people who have road rage because someone cutting you off and you're yelling at someone who doesn't even hear you. <laughs> They're gone. And you're so angry. And by the time you get to your next stop, the conversation is, yo, this person cut me off. And I was I'm like, I feel blessed that I don't have that. Um, I don't have that. I don't, I don't live in that world where everyone's trying to do you harm. No human is going to leave me living in a life of fear. I used to be the person with road rage. Mm -hmm. I used to be, you cut me off and I'm screaming. I used to like drive fast behind people <laughs> and, you know, like, I'm going to get you. <laughs> I'm going to pull in front of you and slow down real fast. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of the Social Proof Podcast, where we have dope conversations with dope people about dope things. But most importantly, people... That was trifling. Mm, choking Did you on see it. that? You spit, spit on yourself? My, I spit my candy out. And so we out of her we're mouth, in real life. On her shirt. She took it off her shirt and put it back and in I her mouth. And I put it back in my mouth. I absolutely did. So my shirt is maybe it's questionable because it's fresh out of the store. So <laughs> <laughs> it's questionable. That was that was also very trifling of me. However, my name is Donnie Wiggins. I am your favorite business coach, and I am sitting here with my business partner. David Shins, podcaster to the podcasters. Is that right? Podcasters to you podcasters? Are the, you are the podcaster of podcasters yes. and the coach to the podcasters. A hundred percent. So um, I was talking to them. I was being uh, just in my transparency. I feel like. My social media content is just getting stale, and I don't like it. Mm. I loathe posting. Because, I mean, what else are you going to do? I mean, you, obviously, it's a clip from the podcast, or it's going to be a quote, or it's going to be a picture with the slide through with a quote and then picture. I mean, it's, it's, I guess it's cool, but I don't know. I just, I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling it right now, man. Yo, Bree, they, weren't we just talking about this for me? Like, I don't know. I feel like I have, I lack excitement and strategy. I don't know that I ever really had like a conscious strategy of posting on social, but I did en enjoy it. But especially now with two podcasts, it's like, okay, on Tuesdays when the podcast drops, I have to post two clips that day. But then we're posting more clips throughout the week. And then Thursday, social proof drops and we got to mm -hmm. drop content there. But it's like, I'm also like living a life and learning really cool things. Mm -hmm. And I don't ever, ha I don't feel like I have time to, po I'd be posting five times a day. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, and, and obviously the, the quantity is a, um, you know, just the more you have to post, the less you post because it's mad stuff you got to post. It's you just don't do any of it. for me. But the, even the style of it, I mean, you post a clip from your podcast. Let me go look at your, um, your That's social what media. That's we do. You I don't, post a clip from the podcast. Um, now, I think it's. Picture. It, I think it's a great idea for getting people and drawing people to the podcast, but for the social media presence, it's like, eh. Yeah. I, I don't know. It, my pictures do well. Like if I have pictures in a, a deep caption, but then I feel corny with the doing the caption because I'm doing it so that people will like it. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't know. It's just my, I, I, I'm not excited. I used to have a really, really good social media strategy i was doing content creation workshops and i was helping people grow and my account was growing now it's still growing but not like 
as fast as it was because I think the audience can feel that I'm not inspired on social media right now. So I am looking at your Instagram page and I don't know if you guys can see this, but this is where we are today. I am looking on your Instagram page and if I land on your Instagram page right away, I will say if I did not know you, I'm probably not clicking yeah. because I don't immediately see what the gist of your page, like what is the type of content I'm going to get from your page. But I will say that if, if it were all podcast clips and things like that, I would get it. But you have a couple of me. It's like you're trying to find yourself. I see you now posting like other just inspirational moments. And maybe this just has to build up and, and show itself more, you know, for a longer period of time before I get it and other people get it. But it is right now it's podcast clips and it's, it's uh, what do you call it? Promotion and advertisement for events and the meetup. Um, this does not look like Dave. I'm not inspired. This does not look like Dave. I'm not inspired. I'm trying to figure out what to do. Like once everyone does the same thing, I'm always trying to go left. Yes, me too. You know what I mean? Like even so a few years ago, really inspired. Why? Because I'm interviewing entrepreneurs that you've never heard of. Yeah. Right. And, and when I started, nobody was doing that. Like, where would you, you're not going to see a hundred wall street trapper interviews or him 500 or Neo or even like Brad Lee or any of these people, any of them, like you didn't see a lot of the, and I was a lot of people's like first or second interview period. Yeah. So at that point, it's really exciting because it's like, oh, my gosh, I'm being introduced to somebody. But now we know the power of podcasting. Mm -hmm. Everybody's on podcasting and everyone's starting a podcast and we're all interviewing the same people. Everybody is circulating the same people. Yes. I'm dealing with that struggle as well. Yeah, yeah I'm dealing with that, too. It's like um, and this was the confusion for me. When uh, starting this, the Full Transparency podcast, I told you, like, well, what am I supposed to do? Just talk to the same people that we talk to on the Social yeah. Proof podcast. And I guess the catch, the, the draw is a little different because I don't really interview guests on the Social Proof podcast. Yeah. So me getting that perspective in Full Transparency is a thing, but it's still a person who's been on Social Proof. So I have been trying to be very conscious about um, not having guests that have been, like, highly or recently marketed via social proof. I've had a couple of people say, hey, Donnie, let me get on full transparency recently. And I'm like, uh, you were just on social proof. Let's give it a couple of months, yeah. right? Um, and I'm trying to find, here's the other thing. I'm trying to find and highlight entrepreneurs that don't get these platforms, um, but then they don't really have the draw, right? So then yeah. how does it help you grow as a business and have the engagement and, and all that stuff? It's like, Sure. I, I like what uh, EYL is doing. They're interviewing people that aren't people that would normally, that you would normally know of. You know what I mean? Like, I think they just dropped a, a company where they're making a bunch of money from flowers. It's like a flower company. Mm -hmm. right? But they're not, I don't think the people are on social media like that. Right. Mm -hmm. But so that's one strategy. But, but who, it, we're in a space where like you want to get to know people that you already kind of know. Yeah, for you know sure. I mean? Like influential people, you want to have them on. And we, I mean, well, I don't interview rappers or, you know, celebrities. We just don't do that. I think what you're doing is unique because it's just you and you'll get people to fall in love with just you. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. Um, but I like, I'm still thinking through that unique twist. What is the content that we can put out that is a unique twist? Yeah. I have one really good idea that I'm going to save. Yeah, I have a good idea. I know Wallow gave me a good idea and it was so on time because it was in alignment with what I've already been thinking. Um, <clears throat> we just don't necessarily have the team to pull it off right now. We need more people. And uh, but but I have. You want to talk about the idea? No, not. Mm. They'll see a little bit of it on the Full Transparency podcast, but I don't want to go deep into it because as soon as you say something, somebody's going to going to do it. So, or you could say it, and that kind of puts the timer on your back to make sure you do it. I don't need the timer. Yes, you do. No. Sometimes. I don't want the timer. Y'all need So the timer. we're going to do it. I just have to figure it out 
Um, I have to figure out how it's going to happen. And in my mind, I don't know. We may be able to pull it off with just Reese. Um, but it, I don't know. I don't know. I think he would need some help. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But there are some different things. Let me help you. Tell me about it. I'll tell you about it off camera. Why not talk about it on camera? Why not talk about your idea on camera? I will. I'll talk about it. You just said you wouldn't. But I will. But do it. Okay. You first. I'm going to go interview homeless people. I love that. You've said that before. Yep. Mm hmm. You've said that before. I'm going to go interview homeless people. Mm -hmm. Friday, I'm going to mic up. We're going to interview homeless people and give them some money to do an interview. You know what I think? I think it, um, we have enough people. Your turn. We have enough people for your first, like, year of episodes right by our new establishment. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Mm hmm. Um, yes. Yes, we do. And give we'll them some money. Give them a couple dollars. Give them a couple bucks for the interview. How'd yeah. you get here? How'd so, get okay. Here? Interview homeless people and uh, people. Ooh, you know what would be a good um, idea? Or never, I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe not. I had an idea for a podcast this morning. Not necessarily No, talk for about me. the one you was going to talk about. I just gave mine. So, the, yeah, you did. The spin mm -hmm. on full transparency. Um, so when I open up full transparency, I always say uh, full transparency is a conversation with my entrepreneur friends, some that I've just met. Um, so this is not an interview. This is a conversation as if we were at lunch and I'm having this talk and I'm getting to know them at the same time as you. And so Wallow said, well, where's the food? And early when we first started, I wanted a cart with when we were first getting started, I had Brie looking for this cart like, oh, it'll be dope if we have this cart on set and we have like drinks like mocktails and, you know, things to eat. So we're actually having this conversation. And then I saw one of uh, Carrie Shapleza's episodes for the first time. And I'm like, no, nah, now we can't do it because Young Miami. Carrie Shapleza. That's the name of her show. Carisha. 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 What in the world? Okay, so it's C A R E, and where I come from, that's care. Okay, so anyway, um, Carisha, Carisha, please. I saw her episode for the first time, and she was kind of doing the thing. She has a bartender, I think, off camera, and they're serving drinks. And I'm like, mm, now if I do it, it's going to look like I'm trying to do what she was doing. And Wallow said, just go out, like just be on location. And when I did the episode with Dr. Bobby, we actually had food on site yeah. and it was so dope. So many people loved that aspect and loved it. It's just hard to do, you know, in that room. So I think I want to go on site and it actually be a conversation that I'm having with friends over lunch because I tell people to get in the mind like this is the type of conversation I would have. But I think it would be so much more organic and transparent if we were actually doing that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Got to do something innovative. Yeah. And I just love it. It gives us, it, it, it's going to serve as a double purpose. Um, I'm sure there are enough black owned restaurants first to start with. Um, highlighting these establishments, loving the food and, and having this conversation with the entrepreneur is going to bring uh, awareness to these restaurants, whether they need it or not, it will, you know, it can become like a, a place that tourists want to come because they saw it on the social proof podcast. Yeah. But I want to do something different. I want, you know, I just, I want to do something that's more exciting. Yeah. So maybe Donnie's solo episodes stay in the studio, but as many opportunities as I can to get people out and about, I just mm -hmm. think it would, in fact, we've got three shows lined up for this upcoming Friday. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to go in the streets. Good. Oh, you're, so you're, instead of the studio, you're just going to take them, do it outside? Or yeah, Reese, can we do that? Like, do we have the equipment and everything to be outside? How 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 complicated is that? I'm sit? thinking we stand there. we're going to be at a booth. So you're going to go to a restaurant. I'm going to go to a restaurant. Gotcha. Pre-order the meal. Have it already ready. Right. Let the waitress know we don't need a whole lot of service. Kind of think social proof seven. Right. Yep. Well, the meal is here and we're having conversation over a meal. I want people to actually see what that looks like. Yeah. Um, in that experience. But my concern is like, I know we use a really big light. I don't know if that's really necessary. And when I'm thinking about having this team to do it, I've got big equipment that 
we pack up and put down like Reese, do you think that's actually possible for us to do? Do we even need that big light? Yeah, I think you got to talk to the, the venue. Oh, I got places. And if sure. we're thinking about the time of day, it's usually a little lower. So we find the place. Mm -hmm. It's kind of private. But when we think about like, uh, what's his name? Guy Fieri? Guy, what's his name? Last name? Guy Fieri mm -hmm. from the Food Network. When he goes to diners, dive-ins, and, and dives, there are people in the background still doing right. business. So then it's a matter of our mics. You wouldn't, would you feel a way of people like listening to you? You know, what I, you know what I always feel uncomfortable going in a place where there's, where I have like a camera on me and I just, I don't know. I feel a way. I feel uncomfortable. I do feel uncomfortable when the establishment doesn't expect that. Yeah. So like me and Zell yeah. and the team went to toast at Lennox. Um, the other day and I'm Zell's walking up with the camera. I'm like, put that camera down. <laughs> uh, right. We're not about to walk through um, toast with the camera up because I feel like everybody's looking like, who is she? Yeah, and what is that about? Yeah. But if this were the format of the show mm -hmm. and this was expected, no, I don't feel away. Okay. I, I'm fine. It's like a performance for me. Got it. Okay. We've mm -hmm. got, we've got to take things to the next level. We got to go up. And I, 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 I've, for me, I've always thought in those terms. Like anytime you see me do something else, it's just because I got tired of it. Like even the, like we did Black Equity Con, which is dope. We had a bunch of different um, workshops and things of that nature. But now I'm seeing everybody just does conferences. It'd be the same people. It's the same like format. It's just we got different. Obviously, you're going to have real estate and you're going to have, um, this and that and different topics. Just ghetto. First of all, eat your little snacks. It's all good. I was so just off in the camera. middle. Look at you. You look crazy now. <laughs> oh my gosh. Let me just get two of them. I was doing just it while we hungry. were off camera, and you wanted to just bring attention. Because y'all, I'm hungry. Yeah. <laughs> And gummy worms are going to fix that? Sour gummy worms Sour are gummy worms. doing exactly what they need to be doing. Okay, so if everyone is doing success conferences or conferences about, like, success in general, um, that's why I'm like, yo, okay, I want to do podcasts. Something. I want to do, like, more narrow events. I told Terika the same thing. I told her this last year. I said, Terika... I want to do, it initially started off with me wanting to do a real estate conference, bringing people together, and obviously I have a relationship with Terika, and like I wanted her to kind of headline it, but I, I brought it to her like, yo, we need like niche events, real estate events, so she wound up putting pulling off an amazing event, were y'all there, anybody there? It was awesome. Prop, yeah, Property Challenge, about a thousand people there, and it was phenomenal. Let me tell you what's crazy, so I'm talking to my homegirl, and she did some stuff at at uh, Black Enterprise. And shout out to Black Enterprise. They've been a staple in the community forever. And I was like, yeah, man, so, you know, tell me, you know, how it was. She's like, yeah, we had about 1,000 people there. And I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. Terika, female real estate gurus who, in the grand scheme of things, who knows her, right? right? Unless it's somebody that follows or kind of in this circle or whatever, her brand is growing, but she's bringing out the same amount of people as Black Enterprise. Mm -hmm. And I think it's because we've not seen innovation from these companies that have just been these companies for mad long. And I'm not saying anything bad because I still want them Black Enterprise write-ups. And yeah, I would love to speak at your event. You know what I mean? But I think people are going to... People, companies, we see companies crash all the time because... They don't feel something in the market and yeah. say, okay, something different has to be done. Mm -hmm. That's where I'm at with this content creation. I just haven't figured it out yet. It has to be something different other than podcast clips, motivational quotes, and pictures. Yeah. Yeah. I feel the exact same way. I think that's also, I think that's the number one reason that I don't do events. Mm -hmm. um, number one, I am always speaking at an event. So I'm always in the environment, just like you, of being in either success rooms like where we're talking about becoming more successful or women's empowerment rooms. And, and of course people want to come and they want to see you, but just energetically for me, it's like, 
it's the same old thing. Yeah. Like when I used to do actionable woman events a couple of years ago, like it was nobody was really doing that. Nobody was really bringing women into a mansion not you know, and doing yeah. sleepovers like we were all sleeping in the same mansion. Mm -hmm. Nobody was doing that. And now everybody's doing mansion events and everybody's doing, you know, sleepovers. And yeah. and so I just kind of lost the luster, even when I was disappointed when the pandemic happened, because I'm like, oh, man, now I'm not going to be able to do those events anymore. Mm -hmm. But as I've just been studying what's going on and what's happening, I'm the same way. Once everybody started doing it, I'm cool. Yeah. Like, I don't have that excitement for it anymore. So what's the spin? And I honestly haven't. Last year, I just didn't have the desire to think of right. the, the the new perspective. But And then this year, I've, just the mental capacity is like focusing more on building a business that doesn't rely so much on Donnie the person like I've really, really, really been uh, strategizing through that. But when it comes to, I still enjoy though, like we talked about this, I still enjoy being in and around and among people. Yeah. I still very much enjoy that. I still very much enjoy being in front of the room and having the impact and then getting into the, like we pull up seats next to people when we do our VIP dinners, we're not just in front of the room. Yeah. I still enjoy that. But I do feel like I do feel like consumers are just exhausted with these same old events. Yeah. So what changes What's different. And I personally have just grown tired of the type of event where people are just pumped up, but there's no result. Yeah, for sure. We were looking at some of these uh, videos and I'll, I'll kind of show you. But one. Oh, crap. I'm sorry. My bad. Um. So one is, I'm pressing all the buttons. It's crazy. Um, one is Drewski, right? You know, Drewski. Yeah. So he does the, he does the whole, uh, what's it called? What's his, what's his show called? Could have been records. So it's, it's almost like a ghetto American Idol, right? But he's a personality. He's funny. And you're waiting for the next person to come up, right? We were just watching this one. This is my first time today watching it. This AMP button, AMP button, if y'all watching it. So it's like five or six guys behind a, a curtain, right? One of the guys comes out and they're sitting across the, the table from a woman. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like, it's almost like a date getting to know the person. Mm -hmm. And there's a button on the table where at, it, at any point, if the guy or the girl girl isn't feeling this person, they hit the button. So like you hit the button and the whole room turns red. So I thought that was like super and they're they're polarizing, they're very, very funny. But like it's the the whole conversation may last 45 seconds, if hmm. that. But I was looking at that and I was like, yo, this is amazing. First off, is this it? This isn't uh, hold on, let me see it. This isn't the one we were just watching. Let me go back. Um, but, uh, in addition to this one, and I'm gonna find the ones we were actually watching, but in addition to this one, you know, you have, I think somebody who was innovative was tiny desk. Yeah, for sure. Tiny desk. So they're doing these, uh, oh, AMP the button too. So, so see how you have the guy and the girl, they're having a conversation and they're doing all kind of stuff like. They just hit the button if you don't like it, whole, whole, whole room turns red, right? This one girl, she hit the button, and she hit it by mistake, and the guy was like, oh, did you hit that by mistake? You ain't trying to talk to me no more? She's like, nah, nah, it's all good. He was like, all right, y'all, take it back. So the, the room turns white again, and then he hits the button, like, all right, you're out of here. <laughs> nice. No, so, so look at that. It's a white room, two chairs, and a button on the table, right? And you'll see many different people come out, women of all different looks, it was a, like a transgender that pulled up. See how, see her? Hold on, let me see. You're not gonna be able to hear it, but on the podcast. Okay. But it's really, really funny. All right. So I don't want to. I don't want to ruin the the uh, the experience for the uh, podcast. But it's just look. Look how simple this is. If you have a room, two chairs, table, button. See how you just hit the button. And it turned red. To, yeah, the whole room turns red. They get up and then walk away. It's just dope. It, but it's it, look how short the segment is. That was a whole 25, 30 seconds to figure out if you like somebody or not. 
but they're funny, right? And they're in the back. So these five guys in the back, see that microphone right there, Donnie? Mm -hmm. They'll say something over the loudspeaker, right? And they'll say something like, hey, uh, what did he say last one? He was like, um, uh, he's a hoarder. So the girl's like, you're a hoarder. And then she hits the button. She's like, yo, why you hit the button? She's like, yo, because I'm really, really clean and you're a hoarder. He's like, you believe them? It's like, yeah, I do. She's like, yo, you sure you don't want to try this out? And she was a cute girl. It was just dope, man. Yeah. See how the same girl is there now and they change persons and he comes out. And it's just it's just dope and creative, man. Yeah. So this is you feel me? It's it's create it's creative content. So a couple of days ago, I had Wallow on the podcast, and um, remember he we had him on Social Proof mm -hmm. last year. Yeah, uh, yeah, earlier last this year. year. It was last year. Okay, mm -hmm. so we had him on the podcast not too long ago, and he talked about this Go Crazy package. Yeah. And for those of you who hadn't seen that episode, the Go Crazy package, he was talking about having a new perspective on positioning yourself differently on a first date. So instead of oh, taking... Oh, y'all stay focused. <laughs> Look at y'all. Instead of taking a woman to dinner in a movie, like have more of a lasting impression, how do you stand out? And he said he loves to take, you know, a, a mom to someone that he's interested in. She's a mother. He's taking her to like Target. He's assessing, what do you need? You get the shopping cart, baby, and you go crazy, meaning put everything you want in this shopping cart, right? And then he'll take her to the grocery store and fill up a freezer. And his mindset is, so every time she pulls that frozen pizza out or every time she's cooking with that utensil, she's thinking, wallow. So he comes on the Full Transparency podcast. Did you get a frozen pizza? I did. <laughs> did, you, did you think about him when you pulled it out? I have not pulled it out yet. <laughs> so he comes on Full Transparency and he said, you know what, Donnie? We're going to go crazy. And we did just that. And when we left the set to go out into the streets and actually demonstrate the behavior that he was talking about, I felt that energy then like, okay, I like this. This would actually be entertaining, not only entertaining, but educational. Like we had a whole conversation first and then we did something that was really exciting. So whether it's having lunch all the time or pulling up to restaurants or it being a bar experience, regardless of what it is, there needs to be something yeah. that people are thinking, what's Donnie and her guest up up to this week? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I'm like, if you just like scroll through YouTube, you'll see like different ideas like you ever seen this 60 days in uh -uh. so it's people who aren't prisoners but they go to jail for 60 days but the other prisoners don't know that they're, they're not, not real real prisoners they're in real jail but yo it's real jail. it was one it was one of the episodes i was watching my man <clears throat> fit in like he just got in there like he's he having fights he like he running in a little jail the real little prison joint there's another one that i watch um See what I says, a uh, 40-year-old man exposed D1 recruits. All they do is line up on a line on a football field. There's a person on offense, person on defense. The person on defense has to stop the person from off on offense from catching the ball. And some people get cooked. It's good, it's good defense, good content. Hot ones. You seen hot ones? Mm -mm. So, you know, I don't really watch anything. You should. I don't watch TV for real. Like, I like to have things on in the background, but I couldn't tell you what happened. You should. Yeah. You should watch it. I probably hot should. Hot Ones is a, it's an interview show, but they eat hot wings. Oh, I think I saw that, where they're going through and get it's getting hotter and hotter and hotter. Yeah, yeah I, I would love to do something like yeah. that um, for sure. Oh, I just got it. I know what I'm going to do. Right, because the I'm interview not, is not about the interview. It's about the other thing. It's about the other thing. But I, right. I know I know one. it's not even going to be the thing that I'm going to do, but I know a concept yeah. that I'm going to do. It just needs to be exciting and refreshing. Yeah. Um, I know that you and I have been doing Social Proof now for three years, and it's time to it, – I'm feeling like it's time to – how do we inject that new energy, yeah. you know, into it and get lit? I think it would be cool if we actually did. I know that we're working on a documentary behind what we're doing with the building. But if we even did a series like Donnie and Dave do business yeah. um, and take people and we can start. We already have enough content to take people from the beginning. Mm -hmm. But if we did a segment just like the Donnie and Dave part, 
is a segment of the Social Proof Podcast. Yeah. We can do another segment of us actually going through that journey and people seeing how we actually conduct business. It's really difficult for me to show sh- social sh- ugh, so show social proof in my business um, of coaching. I show a lot of behind the scenes, but I have to mute the volume because I'm dealing with people's personal lives yeah, and their sure. personal business. But to be able to show people how we actually conduct business that we can share would be really cool. Yes. Yo, let's actually play a um, play a clip and you just got to add it in there. But play a clip from the conversation we were just having uh, with Tyreek. You're Tyreek. You're Talik. You're Talik. You're, you're Talik. Tariq. Yeah, Tyreek. So really my objective. Yeah, we're going to play that clip for sure. Uh, my objective was really to talk him out of his dream. Mm-hmm. And I you're think always you, trying to talk somebody out of their dream. I mean, I think that would be entertaining. Because people look at me as like a really nice guy, right? And I am a nice you guy. You are a really nice guy. But I want to I wanna be, and it, it will be a character specifically for, I think it would be educational, one. But two, um, I think it would be kind of like polarizing content. I wish that people could see some of your most naive moments. What do you mean? You have some strong, like, gullible and naive moments. I got to tell a story real quick before we play this clip. (laughs) So we're in New York, right? They already played the clip. Oh, they did? Okay, cool. All right. So so we're in New York a couple weeks ago, and Dewan... Um, of the Human Behavior Mastery Podcast. Shout out to Human Behavior Mastery Podcast on Social Proof Network. Anyway, Dewan is driving us around New York, and he's bringing us from Brooklyn back to Queens. Now, we're in a cute hotel, but it's in an area that's pretty, like, closed down. So it's like business hours, right? So we get back. It's going on midnight. We're getting out of the car. And as we're, as we're pulling up in the street, there's this guy on the sidewalk who's walking our direction. He's walking regular pace, right? David gets out of the car. He goes around the car and he's just standing there because I'm still getting out. So he's waiting. The guy sees us and he slows down. His walk starts becoming really, really slow. So I'm already on alert, right? This is just what I do. I'm already on alert. Like, hmm, that's interesting. He's smoking his little cigarette or whatever. And he slows down. So we end up walking. I put my purse like across me. We end up walking. We're going on the sidewalk to our hotel, and this guy starts walking a little faster to catch up to us, and he looks at Dave, first words out of his mouth. Yo, my man, what size shoes them is? He did. And David goes, hmm? (laughs) Hmm? 13. He goes, David goes, hmm? And the guy's like, what size shoes them is? And David I don't know says, if he said it as aggressive as just saying it. This he 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 says what size really shoes them is. Shit. David says, "Oh, these are 13." <laughs> <laughs> now, I should have said your size. Right, right right right. So meanwhile, Dewan, who was about to get in his car, like I'm looking the first time he said what size shoes them is. The first thing I do is turn around because I'm looking for it. Like I know what's up when somebody approaches you and says what size shoes them is. I am looking for the first, the biggest vehicle to get behind. Cause all I know next is take them off. Right. Dave is smiling. Dewan also senses trouble. Dewan is strapped. We in New York. Y'all know I carry. I'm not, we're not carrying in New York. Right. So Dewan walks up. He got his hand on his hip. Dewan said, yo, what's up, my man? What's going on? David. Yes, Dewan didn't say anything. Yes, yes, no, he, he did. He, he was just standing there. Dewan's, if- no, 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 David. This is how detached you are. Dewan is walking across the street. No. And Dewan says, yo, 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 what's up? You know, and David goes, oh, Dewan, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool. It's, it's, it's good. He was just asking about my shoes. <laughs> You are making me just seem so corny right and now. Like, that wasn't, this is what it happened. It didn't happen this way. So I'm telling you. Now, this is a sensationalized story. This is story. exactly how it happened. He doesn't want it to have the one. But David, so in that moment, I'm thinking the hotel has a keypad entry. So you got to knock or use a room key or something, but it's locked. So we ain't running in there fast, right? David then called out our security. Oh, no, no, no. It's all good. He's just asking about my shoes. 
And I realized how sweet, how really genuinely, like you see the best in everybody. As soon as we got in the hotel, I said, David, you do understand he was assessing his risk. If you had said the size shoe that he actually wears, you would have been coming up out of those shoes tonight. Let and me, David goes, I don't think so. I think he was just really into the shoes. <laughs> <laughs> he liked the shoes. He, let, me tell you, let me tell you this. No one has ever robbed me, ever. So the guy says, he walks by and says, what size shoes are those? No, I said. What size shoes them is. There's very different. What size shoes them is. I said, oh, 13. He's like, oh, yeah, I wanted them. I'm like, yeah, I, I got Dude. them too. He never, here's the thing. He never stopped walking. It wasn't like he stopped, said, hey, what's our shoes on? He's walking by. He said, hey, what's Mad our shoes on? slow. Because he's trying to see my shoes. They're yeah. Nice shoes. He does say so, after so here's David. The thing, here's the thing. So Dewan, Dewan steps out the car. Dewan didn't say anything because he still was talking like, yeah, man, because I wanted those and I couldn't find them in a tent or something like that. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, what you going to do? So he walks, he just walks away. So I'm also, now, if this was, if it was a group of three people, three guys at midnight, I would, my, my, my antennas would go up a little higher. But this guy, I can take him. He's good. I'm, I'm not, I, like, I, I don't even think, wow, this person's going to take my shoes. That has never happened to me. My Hey, twin, can I, can I FaceTime you real quick? Yo, but real quick, don't try to lead him into... I'm not leading the, him into anything. All right, so let's, ha let's have him just tell the story, how he remembers the story. Okay? Dewan, are you there? D, we're on the podcast. What up, what up? All right, this is Dewan, you guys. You got to talk a little louder too. I need the mic. I'm putting you up to the mic. I'm telling the story. No, I'm just not, I'm not going to say anything. I'm telling the okay. story of what happened in New York when you dropped us off at our hotel. Um, okay. Can you tell your version of the story? Um, I dropped y'all off. We pull up. Is this audio louder? Did you turn it up for me? Can you hear? Okay. Yeah, y'all hear me? Yeah, yeah we hear on. you. All right, so we pull up. Dave gets out the car. You get out. You're getting out the car. I tell you, don't touch doors. I get you out the car. We walking on the sidewalk. Davis scaring you because you scared of rats, so you start running up. So there's a dude on the right hand side walking across. I kind of peep him out the corner of my eye. He stops, and I think that he's stopping to let us walk by. So I'm like, okay, he's letting us walk because he sees us going to the hotel. So I kind of walk midway with y'all to the hotel door. Y'all go to the door, whatever. Dave opens the door for you, I believe. You know, we're saying goodbye. you like, yo, let me know when you get home. I'm like, I got you. you like, no, I'm serious. So I'm like, all right, cool. So I turn to walk to the car. I hear something, and I turn to look over my shoulder, and I see, like, dude talking to Dave. Now, the look on Dave's face, I'm thinking the dude probably said, like, yo, I'm a fan of the pod, because Dave is giving him, like, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But it wasn't until I saw your face that I realized something bad is happening and I can't hear what's going on. Like, you looked concerned. So I immediately turned around and walked over there. I'm like, yo, what's good? What's going on? And Dave was like, yo, bro, chill. No, no, no. He started laughing. Like, oh, I don't remember that crazy. And, like, I saw you, like, kind of say something to him. Like, no, no, no. Like, stop. Like, so I kept walking over there. I'm like, yo, everything is good? And you kind of like looked at me and Dave's like, nah, we good, bro. We about to go in. And the guy's kind of like slowly walking away a little bit. But again, I'm not close enough to hear what's happening. I just went off of the energy and the vibe. So I immediately was like, I clicked in the gear. But, like, was, was but was okay. Did he say everything I said? Well, kind of. Yes, he did. He said, but, but he, went off the said he went off the energy and the vibe of you being high alert. Yes, because Dave DeWan said he noticed the guy slowed down. He looking at your energy. You're like, yee, yee, yee. I'm looking concerned. <laughs> what did I say? I said, Dave is talking. I immediately look around like where our next move is about to be. I said, DeWan comes up like, yo, what's up? What's going on? Dave he did. didn't think I didn't he, even did. Hear that. he did all of that. Like it, right. there was a situation like DeWan. I don't know if it was a situation. Do, in, in any city, but especially New York, 
do men at midnight just come up to strange men and ask them first words out of their mouth what size shoe you're wearing? He's going to rob you or he's going to pop on you immediately. Period. He didn't, he didn't do he none of that. Do you believe... He's actually rocking you to sleep by starting a conversation. <laughs> exactly. Do you believe so, that if and, if, and if... and let me back up. I thought he was smoking something, but my man had a bubble coat on and it wasn't cold out <laughs> We already know what's good. Like, I already know what's up with this. Why you got on this bubble coat? But, De but Dewan, I know it is he, my he belief. He didn't do nothing. It, because you didn't have his size shoe, so it wasn't worth the felony. No, it's not about this. Yo, I'm wearing a, I'm wearing a gold Rolex. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm wearing chains. He it wanted wasn't your the sneakers. Shoes. But, but Dave, I'm gonna be real with you. I didn't know that. I didn't realize it was. I didn't think it was anything because I've seen people go talk to you and you look real relaxed. I'm not gonna front, but. The proximity, y'all was close enough where if he wanted to stall on you, he could have stalled on you. I would have just washed him because he wouldn't have seen me coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyway. I didn't think it was an issue until I saw Donnie's face. Mm -hmm. Donnie's right. face told me something is not comfortable. I here. promise you, if he, if you would have said his size shoe, it would have been worth the risk for him. I don't. Yo, I'm wearing two gold chains and I'm wearing a Rolex. It's Everybody not, it wasn't got the shoe. that. He you wanted think, your shoes. Oh, oh, yeah. Dewan, thank you, babe. Oh, my gosh. All right. Yeah, everybody's so, like, what everybody I, wants isn't the same. I agree. In some scenarios, that would be um, a dangerous situation. For me, I um, I grew up in a, in a town where there's fights every day. And you have to be somewhat tough. And you got you, you to gotta have this, like, persona. And even growing up, I didn't, obviously we all got into fights, but I was never like this super aggressor, but I can always assess a situation. Hmm. And I know when someone's trying to do me harm. Like I, 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 I have like a spidey sense, just how I can tell when somebody's lying to me. I can just feel it. But this person, this, this particular situation, I did not feel a threat. Yeah. I didn't feel a threat. Yeah. And no one's ever taken any shoes for me no one's ever robbed me yeah. no one's ever beat me up ever in my life because eh. my i don't so? know listen do my father in. didn't raise any punks it my was, daddy raised no sissies i'll tell you that it was 80 ish degrees outside it's going on midnight do walking down the street with a bubble coat on and first he did not say hello he said nothing he slowed down and said... Who in New York says, hey, how you doing? I'm like, hey, how are you? Who says what hello? What person anywhere just says, yo, my man, what size shoes them is? That's any city. You don't... Especially up north. Nobody. The question is, yo, where were you able to find those? But where I you get those? Say, you got a plug? Hey, I wouldn't say, hello. Where'd you get those shoes from? No, Who but it, it could like be... That? It could also be what's good. Like, what's up? What's up? Where you get those from? I understand from? that. But he for, said there was no salutation. From my perspective, from my perspective... I can tell when yo there, there was nothing standing between him and me from him doing something. He's not looking at you like, oh my gosh, Donnie's there. I'm. Saying, I don't even think he saw Dewan. He sees me and you. If he wanted to do, if he would, if his intention was to do something, it would be. But for me, I have, I I can assess a situation. I can feel day. I can feel it. Sometimes. I can too. And when I tell you that I felt it when he said, "What size shoes them is?" Yeah. I felt it. And I also felt that Dewan, he did see Dewan because he was, he he saw all of us. Yeah. Dewan walked us across the street. Dewan came back, had his hand on his hip. And Dewan oh boy, little, so. Dewan is little, but he's he's feisty. What like, I'm saying he's gonna is, pop. From this, this guy is not This guy was a big oh. guy. Right. So he's not saying, oh, I, if he wanted, David, if, if his intention was to rob me, he would have robbed the me. The moral of the story is you didn't have his size shoe. The size that you wear was not the size that he was interested in. Oh my the wine gosh. comes running over. Like everything he happened so fast. Over. The wine was walking over expeditiously. He just said it. He just said, okay. yo, I came back over. The wine came. The shoes weren't the right size. Fair we assessment. were right outside of the hotel. He weighed his risks and kept it moving. Fair assessment. The wine was about where. Me and Z the distance between me and Zella for sure about that, right? Yeah. So the guy is about this close. Yes. So I don't. He ne he never turned We're around. Also he was looking standing at me and my behind shoes. an SUV. There was an SUV okay. blocking Dewan from seeing us. Yes. So you're absolutely right. In certain situations, he could have he could have wanted to do harm to me, but based on his tone 
and how he was talking and his approach. He did not have an aggressive tone at all. Yo, the first time he said it, Dave said, huh? I was like, huh? Huh? <laughs> 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 he seemed cool. He, like, he just really wanted to know where I got my shoes from. He really wanted to know where I got my shoes from. My poor friend, I swear, I swear, Dave, um, I just giggled when I got back to my room. I think I got on the phone with Trap that night. We were talking about something, and I said, yo, I got to tell you about Dave because he's so nice. I'm not that, it's not even that I'm not that nice. I, I'm not trusting people like that. Like, if he had said, what's good, what up, blah, those dope, where you get them from, the energy I felt would have been completely different. Mm -hmm. But assessing the size of your shoe, walking down a dark street. Yes. Are you At that hour. Are you 100% positive? You can say with 100% clarity, his goal was to rob me that night. For sure. 100%. 100%. There's no doubt in your mind. I have zero doubt you and i grew up very different though like period How'd you grow up um you you <laughs> i mean i'm originally from new orleans and i was raised in college park georgia i have been involved in shootouts and i've seen those things happen like i've seen there's sops for this i've seen this with my own eyes where did i grow up i mean you grew up you said in neighborhoods but i think that you were very like you were never of that. Like I have in my younger days dated some guys that probably were doing these things. I know mm -hmm. I've been in college. Like I had the door kicked in on an apartment for somebody to write. Like I've been in situations where I just have a little bit more street. You think so? S for sure. David, if look, let me just be, but, you, but, but you, are you 100% positive of that? Yeah. I don't think, I, I don't think that you were in it. I don't you know? think you I don't think you ever swung on nobody for real really? like mm -mm. and I think like if we had to fight somebody in here That's I'm awesome. swinging first <laughs> you are probably swinging first I'm probably sure. swinging first but it doesn't and you better jump in <laughs> yeah for sure I I mean and this is here's the thing o on this podcast my my objective <laughs> is not to prove to anyone that I'm tough no but I have I have grown up amongst all of it like i've i've robbed people before no way yeah i mean it's it's not what i'm what i'm saying is my i've I, we're in an environment where one everybody sells drugs actually uh well you were a drug dealer yeah a little bit yeah i wasn't really wasn't all that good at it. <laughs> you were the weed man but ben i've uh i've obviously been in fights i haven't been in a lot of fights or as many as my my friends because they're fighting every single day yeah i've always been selective because it never really made sense to me why would i fight somebody you know what i mean have you ever had to fight for your life anytime you're in a fight you're fighting no, for your life i physically had to fight to save my life but you don't fight somebody like every fight you're ever going to be in if it's a physical fight you're fighting for your life i didn't grow up like that we didn't grow up trying to kill each other fighting that just you just you were just trying to win the fight nobody was trying to kill each other oh well that's yeah. <laughs> yeah, fight for fun. Y'all just fight for. We weren't fighting for fun. We were fighting to win, not I know, to die. Yeah, I mean, but where I'm from, if you win, that's a danger because they leave and come back, and then come back, and then yeah. you have to watch yourself the whole time. That's why being so you might even, as well just lose the fight. Even around some like some of my friends that I grew up with, I hated going out with them because. I never know what beef they got into previously. And yeah. I just understand it's going to be a problem. Again, I've, I, I, I would not claim that I've ever been tough. Okay. I'm not claiming I've ever bullied nobody. I'm not claiming, but I've, I've been around it and I've always studied people and it just never made sense to me. I can always, I was, it was my boy, uh, big rod. He'll, he'll assess this story. So my man Rod and his dude, Kobe, they had problems. I think they fought before, but we're in school. And my boy Rod, he, like, first off, he beat mad people up. He just, that was just his, his thing. Like, at football games, he's beating people up, kicking them down the bleachers. Yeah, it I was can't. just, like, kicking Rod, them down you know, the bleachers. Shout out to Rod. Anybody that knows Rod from where we grew up, Rod been beating people up his whole life. So he's in this situation with this guy, Kobe, and I happen to be there. And I, we're like at school, and I'm breaking it up. I'm like, hey, Rod. Now is not the time. <laughs> Let's just not do this right now, right? And the dude Kobe is getting hyped too. And 
for some reason, I think we leave, and then they're they're always trying to set up to where the fight is going to be. Mm -hmm. And his cousin Jeff, shout out to Jeff. Jeff beat up a lot of people too. He been in a whole lot of fights too. But I remember this moment so vividly, and I never even had a chance to talk to Jeff about it because dude Colby was kind of pop. He was pretty popular in school, and Jeff called me a groupie because mm. I didn't want Rod, who is my real friend, to fight Colby on school grounds because Rod has always been in trouble. Like you're gonna get expelled. Like they're gonna lock you up or something, bro. But I, I can assess that situation. I'm thinking of what happens after this. And Jeff, who was like, really like one of my old heads, he's like, yo, you're a groupie. You're, you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, I'm looking out for your cousin because I don't want him to get in trouble. Right. I can always assess these situations. But I've always been like that. Again, I've never been tough, never been a thug, but I, I, I've been around it my whole life. Yeah, and neither have I. I'm not a, I'm not a fighter or, you know, but I have, I have experienced things. And like, I literally had to fight for my life mm -hmm. twice. Um, and so just, and then growing up in the environments that I grew up in and I'm not, I'm not like from, some people are from like the bottom, bottom, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not from that. I am from a neighborhood that my neighborhood grew where I grew up the most, the majority of my life was, um, if you lived on one side of it, y'all probably had a little bit of money, but if you, if you went across the street, it was like the hood. Mm -hmm. And I was always like in school, I was protected by like my hood friends because like you don't play with Donnie or I wasn't even Donnie then you don't play with Denitra. Right. She's nice to everybody. Right. Um, but you, you do grow up in an environment where, because I was always small and I was skinny and you know, all this stuff and I was cute. You got to make an example out of people a couple of times. So you get left alone. Um, and, and that's just, you know, really my experience. But that moment that night I said, Dave is just, he's consistent. You see the best in everybody. Mm -hmm. Like even, when danger, like when danger is present, <laughs> you see the best in everybody. But it brought me to this point. In terms of us building business, at what point, like, I'm leaving Atlantic Station yesterday. I'm getting my nails done, and I'm parked on a side street. I, I'm getting in my car and I close my door. I'm closing my door, and as I'm closing my door on the other side, somebody's knocking on my window. And I, I jump. My door's not closed yet. And it's a young lady, and she's knocking on the window. So when I see it's a girl, for some reason, I immediately go like, oh, okay, I feel better. But you're knocking on my window. You startled me. I'm getting in my car. I didn't even see her coming. And I'm usually so aware. I did not see this girl coming. And she obviously just recognized me from the podcast, and she was excited, and she wanted to speak. But that's a scary place, like, to be in, and it's like, I've, I've looked at some of our friends and I'd be thinking, I remember thinking like when Justin and them started walking around with security, I'd be like, they just doing the most mm. like they're, they're so For extra <laughs> just, you know, but is it, is it, is it a real thing a real now? Thing. Like, sure. and, and I question because I've always wanted to be successful and I believe there was a big part of me that wanted to be famous at one time because I was, you know, doing music but the thought of not being able to run to my neighborhood nail salon and somebody running up, you know, and it could, whenever I see things like that happen, I'm assessing the situation. Like I didn't even see her coming. What if it was somebody that didn't have good intentions and I didn't see them coming? Do I need to have people escorting me to the nail salon? And, and if that's the case, like now, is that the life that I really want? I don't want to not be able to run into the mall or run into the store real quick, right? Yeah. Without having to think about who saw me and who means ill intention. Yeah. I don't know. That's just kind of what that brought me to. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I sometimes I do feel danger, and that's when I just avoid it. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. okay, I did get beat up one time. That's you got beat up mad times. No, I just one did. time. It was in fifth grade, fourth grade or fifth grade. That doesn't I just, count. He, he punched me right in my face, and I was—I just fell. <laughs> Did he put you to sleep? I just fell. I wasn't sleep. Well, I fell, and then I just got back up. Mm -hmm. But um, um, I—I I don't. I mean, I just don't live. I don't live my life that way because I think I do have high awareness. Yeah, I have—I have really, really high awareness, and I can feel when like when someone doesn't mean me good, especially like in a physical situation. I just I can kind of sense danger, but I again I don't I don't live my life in fear of anything really. Yeah. 
So even like the situation we were talking about on live where people attack me online, yo, like probably three people called me. Like, yo, bro, you good? I'm like, yeah, why wouldn't I be good? It was like, yo, I saw the, the video about you and all. I'm like, okay. Like, I, don't, I, like, I, I, I can't spend time chasing that or worrying about it or trying to fight back. There are people yeah. that you'll get yourself in a deeper situation by trying to fight back because it eggs the people on. Yeah. Right. But I truly, truly, like we talked about on, uh, on live, I feel bad for these people. Mm -hmm. Like I feel bad for someone that is so angry that they would attack somebody that they don't even know. Yeah. Like they, it's something in it. I feel terrible for people who have road rage because someone cutting you off and you're yelling at someone who doesn't even hear you. <laughs> They're gone. And you're so angry. And by the time you get to your next stop, the conversation is, yo, this person cut me off. And I was, I'm like, I feel blessed that I don't have that. Um, I don't have that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't live in that world where everyone's trying to do you harm. I give everybody the benefit of the doubt. And if, if it doesn't work out, if it doesn't work out, it just didn't work out, but it's not the end of the world. Yeah. And if it's my time, it's my time. You know what I mean? Like there's nothing, there's nothing I can do about it being my time. If I got a gun, if I was tougher, if I assessed the situation better, if I just gave my shoot, there's nothing I could do. It was my time. Yeah. So I'm going to live life to the fullest, not in fear of anybody or any man. No human is going to leave me, um, leave me living in a life of fear. I so, don't like this conversation. Why? I just don't. Yeah, I want you to continue to be the gentle hearted person that you are. You really inspire me to be better. I used to be the person with road rage. Mm -hmm. I used to be, you cut me off and I'm screaming. I used to like drive fast behind people and, <laughs> you know, like, I'm going to get you. I'm going to pull in front of you and slow down real fast. <laughs> and then I remember being on the phone with my best friend one day. We would talk on the phone um, on our way to into our jobs, right? This is when I had a job. And never failed. Every single day, one of us are screaming in road rage. And, like, we'd be in the middle of a deep conversation. They'd be like, hold on. And so I remember being on the phone with her one day. Like, mine was really short-lived. But this one day, I'm on the phone with her, and she lost her stuff, like, somebody cut her off and she, I could hear her beating the steering wheel and, you know, speeding up and screaming. And in that moment, I thought, is this how I sound? Mm. Like, do I sound like this? I thought she sounded so ridiculous in that moment. It was embarrassing for me. And I, I wasn't even there. And instantly I said, you sound like this too. Never again, yeah. never again. Now I get annoyed. Get over, come on, go. I say stuff like that, mm. but I don't scream at people. And honestly, we just live in a world today. You you just can't. Mm. It's not worth it. Like you have to assess your risks. Yeah. But 100%. yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you know, that's it. Was there something else we were going to talk about? We were supposed to talk about mad stuff, like you know, business related. We were talking that's about conversation. Uh, we you were inserting the clip from Tyreek. Yes, Tyreek. That's Talik. That's Talik. Tariq. Tariq. <laughs> <laughs> so we learned a lot. Uh, we learned. Creative. We had a safety lesson today. I think this was a safety lesson for entrepreneurs. Absolutely. I would love to hear you guys' um, feedback in the comments. Like, do you think that was a dangerous situation in New York? Or do you think, uh, who was overreacting, Donnie or Dave? They're probably going to say that I underreacted. Underreacted. Did I overreact or did Dave underreact. But if you're not there, then I mean, it's, you can give an opinion, but you weren't there. And you'd have to be so, Dewan is he's always high alert. Mm -hmm. He is, he literally always thinks, like almost like fight first. <laughs> he really does. He came to me one, there was a guy at the Social Proof Alumni affair, he was just, he was just being weird, and I don't even know who invited him. And Donnie, I mean, uh, Dewan was like, Hey, you want me to punch him or you want me to chill? I said, yo, Dewan, 
So, well, let me just let me just go talk to him. He's like, okay, cool. I'm just asking. <laughs> <laughs> just being sure, because it could go either way. Just being sure. But he, oh, he comes from an environment where um, there's more negative than positive in those scenarios, right? So I can't blame you for your perspective because if you see something over and all, if it looks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's a duck. It's baby. a duck, right? Um, so you can't, from somebody's perspective. That's how things go. Now, I think it was a little bit much for you to say he 100% meant me harm, meant me harm because we don't know yeah. that. There's never a, there's never a 100%. It was 100%. Okay. You just didn't wear his side 100% shoe. was he has a gun out and he's trying to meet me. Yeah, he's for sure trying to Well, then me. we don't have to gauge a percentage because we know. We see that. I'm telling you in that scenario, that gentleman. His tone was so calm and chill. There was nothing aggressive about what he said to me. What he said, Donnie's saying is aggressive. The thing he said, but how he said it, there was nothing aggressive about it. It was very friendly. So what DeWan <laughs> said friendly. was, and DeWan's, to DeWan's point, he said, well, in that scenario, they're trying to rock you to sleep. They're trying to make you fr feel friendly. Well, it is what it is. He wasn't getting these shoes, though. <laughs> you were giving you up them shoes, I, I promise you. Oh. No, I wasn't. Oh. I would have taken the shoes off for you and handed them to wow. the guy. Are you kidding me? To save our lives. The, the J's weren't worth the risk. We'd have been walking up them stairs barefoot. Period. No, nah, he wasn't getting the shoes. <laughs> you said he wasn't getting them shoes. <laughs> you couldn't he come He wasn't out getting the shoes. I, you ain't getting these shoes. And if you're watching a podcast, don't try it. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> this is not a green light to find out what's going on. <laughs> you're like, yo, I'm going to get them shoes. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. This was a fun conversation. These are, yeah. But these are the real things that are happening um, behind the scenes like I love that we get to talk about the things that we're experiencing in real time and hopefully it helps you be prepared when you're traveling and you know running your own business and, and things that you have to look forward to because it really is true when people say you think you want a certain lifestyle or you think you want to do certain things but I want you to assess your risk like I want you to assess your risk and determine is that what I really want am I really built for this and go from there. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, I decided um, I used to want to be a billionaire like so bad. I'm gonna be a billionaire. I'm pretty sure I don't desire to be a billionaire anymore. Mm. And it's it's not because of the work that you have to do. Um, because even in seeing the people who do the who become new billionaires in our in our generation, I wouldn't even say that I I look at them and think. They're obsessed. Like I think mm -hmm. of Bill Gates is like obsessed. I, mm -hmm. That's just what my perception is of him. But I don't think like Rihanna is obsessed. I think that she's still living her life and mm -hmm. she just made some really great decisions. Right. But at the same time, like I don't I don't any more desire to like sacrifice my privacy in a way that becoming a billionaire almost seems to guarantee. Yeah. For sure. You got to walk around with security. You got to walk around with security, but you just don't like every, everything. Like how in the beginning of this episode, I spit out a piece of my candy. It would be a clip on every blog. Like if, right. if Rihanna did that, it's a clip on every single blog yeah. all over the world. And who wants to live their life like that? You know, an excellent example though. So for InvestFest last year, Mm -hmm. I interviewed Dan Cathy, but we're walking in the hallway, like not even backstage, just like the hallway leading to backstage, and he's just walking. Yeah. By himself, 12,000 African Americans in one building. He's just walking like it's all good. He almost, he, I guess he reminds me of me. He just, da, 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 I'm Dan Cathy. He's just <laughs> chilling. He doesn't know who he is, right? So, that was that was a that was a moment for me. I'm like, wow. I would be inclined to get security, but he's a trillion times more successful than me. And he's like, he just walks up by himself, no security, nobody else with him. The Not even an assistant. I'm the like, difference though is that Dan Cathy isn't building a personal brand. So the people that support Chick-fil-A don't even know who Dan Cathy is or yeah. what he looks like. True. And he's not like, he didn't build a brand where he had to leverage his success and his things 
in order to build that brand, that's a big difference. Yeah, most billionaires don't build their brand that way, though. No, most Which don't. Means we're doing something wrong. We're doing something wrong. I was building personal brands. Why are we building a personal brand? Yeah, make a billion dollars that way. No, no. Anyway. Oh, well, I mean, Rihanna did. True. Yeah. True. But Rihanna she has to did. walk around with security. She has to walk around with security. So it's kind of like, is that what you really want? Y'all is wanna that be, what you y'all want to be celebrities? Y'all lying. Now everybody know I don't want. Yanni yes, you want to be a YouTube star. Yes, you. Yanni for sure wants to be a Yanni YouTube star. Yanni for sure wants to be a YouTube Trey star. Trey for sure. He's like the introverted, just want to be lit. Rihanna I, wants be lit. to be a YouTube star. You don't want to be a YouTube star, Bri? Oh, my gosh. You see that uh, YouTube? No, real life me, baby. <laughs> now y'all don't want to be celebrities and stuff. Okay, I get it. Fine. Days, you want to be a YouTube star? Yeah. Yeah. Dej is so different from me. She's so behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. At least that's what I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Actually, we just talked about her being my marketing director. Yeah. We got here. Is that what you did? (laughs) (laughs) Is that what you guys discussed? Is that what y'all discussed? We didn't discuss that. Mm -hmm, that. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it, man. And, And I have to think about her. I remember when she was little, um, we had just moved in Atlantic Station. Uh, it was like 2015. How old were you in 2015? Eight years ago. Eight years ago. How old are you now? Okay, so you were 13, 12, 11. So she's like... What? Kind of math? 13, 13. <laughs> so I don't know if you remember this, but she's 13 years old, and we lived in walking distance to the grocery store. And I would, and my window faced the grocery store. So I would let her walk across the street to go to, you know, Publix. And I'd look out the window. The rule was I'm watching you the whole way until you get inside the Publix. And you call me before you walk out so I can see you the whole way coming back. And so one day she FaceTimes me on the phone. And um, and she never FaceTimed me. So I'm like, that's weird. And I don't see her. So I answer the phone and I'm like, Hello? And she's like, hi, mommy. Um, There's a guy here that says that he knows you. He's standing in line behind me at the store. And she's like, he just wanted to say hi. He asked me to call you to say hi. Do you remember that? You remember this? He asked me to call you to say hi. You do remember? And so I'm like, hi, you know, and because I've always been doing things on social media and building on social media. And I'm like, oh, hey, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so when she gets home, she said it made her real uncomfortable. I'm asking, like, how did that even happen? And he walked up. She said he walked up and said, I know you're Donnie Wiggins' daughter because she looks just like me. I know you're Donnie Wiggins' daughter. Call your mom. Like, I want to say hi. Mm -hmm. Just imagine the situation that that puts your kids in. That's kind of (laughs) weird. It's just weird. She's grown now, so I don't have the same thought. But as a little girl, that was always something that I thought about, too. Corey loves it. Does she? Oh, she loves it. Oh, yeah, that's my daddy. I'm like, oh, uh, daddy. Nice but are you usually there? Um, sometimes. Or is she by herself? Sometimes. You know, that's a little sometimes different. Sometimes, like, is that school or something like that? Yeah. yeah. Well, and I think they enjoyed that. Like, yeah. when people's parents would come to her school and stuff, that's different in a safe space. But you didn't like it either? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Walking in the grocery store, though, and, you know, and, and that happens several times. Yeah. Um, that's just stuff that you think about. And so that's something that you think about, like Sarai and Psalm and Corey, yeah. um, them having to go to school with security and stuff. Cause yeah. you're only going to get bigger, Dave. You're only gonna, you're only become going to become more impactful, more successful, more known. Like this is turning into world renowned kind of deal. And you have small children in this process. Yeah. But that's when you go to schools with other kids who are, Lit. That's true. You know what I mean? So are the kids who are what? Kids that have lit parents. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. You lit? Sure. Nah. Are you lit? Man, thank y'all so much for checking no, out. No, no, hey, no, do no, me no. a favor. Are like, you lit? Subscribe. No, not yet. Do you, what do you think of yourself? Like, what do you think of yourself? Who is David Shans? I am an introducer of people to other people. Hmm. I'm a conduit. You're a conduit? Yeah. Your okay, conduit. Do it. Do it. Spell it. I don't know. Okay. But yeah, so that that's how I don't I mean, I don't I don't promote myself as 
the guy. I just feel really, really comfortable knowing that I can always lead you to somebody. I can make a connection with somebody. And, and if you are close to me, it gives you validation that this person is okay. David. What's up? Who is David Shands? I am a husband. Well, that question is kind of strange because I can say I'm a husband and I'm a father. Yeah. And I'm a child of God. Yeah. But who are you? Who are you? I asked you first. It's just a strange question because I don't know what answer you're looking for. I'm a I lot. want I'm I a want, lot of things mm -hmm. depending on the person that is asking me. Mm -hmm. So who am I to my daughter? Who am I to my son? Who are you to you? Who am I to me? I am someone who inspires other people to be better and um, gives people a real a uh, close look of how someone that is regular can win. Mm. Okay. Who are you? I've never thought about it. Mm. Like, I've never thought, I know who I am to other people, but who am I to me? If I had to answer who am I to me, um, I would say that I am a dreamer with a big imagination. Mm. Like I am, Donnie is a dreamer with a, with big imagination. She is a woman who operates out of integrity. I am a lover of people. I love myself like so much. I believe that who I am to me, I probably haven't even realized like I'm still becoming, mm -hmm. I am still a person who's becoming, but the way that I can sum my life up is that I am a dreamer with a huge imagination and I am comfortable operating afraid or unafraid. Right. Um, I am also a person who is striving to become better and, and doing things better. I'm, I'm an imperfect human being living this human experience with big dreams, big imagination, and I'm just not afraid to go for it. And even when I am, I still do. Good. Let's clap that up for Daddy. That was eloquent. That was good. But I'm also a single mama, child of God. I'm a daughter. I'm a business. Yeah. When people ask you who you are, don't start with what you do. None of I'm those things. I'm a gun toting pistol. Uh, Gat toting. Uh, what was that song? Uh, 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 Nuck uh, if you uh, buck. Right. Anyway, <laughs> David's a hood rat. I'm classy. This has been another amazing edition amazing of the Social Proof episode. Podcast, you guys. Listen, if you are a coach or consultant or course creator or you desire to be and you need to fully develop your idea from scratch, you're looking for a coach, I am your girl. Go to www.sixfigureedu.com and schedule a free strategy call. In that strategy call, we have a conversation to determine if we're a good fit to work with you and how we can work with you. Absolutely. My name is David Shands. We are putting together the summit of all summits for content creators, podcasters called the podcast summit. Okay. If you are a business owner and you want to build your brand online, you need to be at the podcast summit. If you are a podcaster, you really need to come to the podcast summit to understand how to monetize your podcast. We have people who are directly linked to the people who pay podcasters. Okay. We actually just locked in with red circle who is uh, the distribution platform that Social Brew Podcast is on, that Earn Your Leisure is on. There's a lot of other people on that platform, and they're going to teach you exactly what they're looking for in a podcast so that it can be monetized. They're also going to be discussing what is that bridge between a major corporation and the podcaster? How do we make money? In addition to that, we're just going to be teaching you best practices, strategies. If you are not a podcaster, you need to be there anyway, because if you have a business, you need to understand how to brand that business online through the biggest platform in the world for content creators, which is YouTube, okay? It's like the number two search engine. So you need to be on there, okay? Many practices, business strategies. It is going to be an experience. Meet us in Miami with 15 other content creators, okay? Podcastsummit.com. Like, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Yep, and we are out. Yep, 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 there's that. <laughs> If you like the video that you just watched, click this one. You're going to like this one, maybe even more. Click it right now.